let me just quickly start off with a little ditty, if I may, um, because I'm quite lucky to be here, actually. I live in Brussels, where Lexus Europe's headquarters is based, and um, I frequently take the Eurostar, which is a great service, I'll have to say, over to London, only two hours, so that's quicker than going to Manchester. Um, in actual fact, so I came very early this morning and was confronted with an accident, so I actually missed my train, which was quite a disaster, and obviously on a day like this you get a bit panicky. So I thought, no problem, I had plenty of time, I'll get a cup of coffee. It was very busy at the station, sat down at a very nice cafeteria, um, which was quite busy, and this gentleman came, to, uh, because it was busy, and asked to sit opposite me. He looked a very respectable guy, businessman in a suit. Can I sit opposite you? He was, he was French, actually. And, um, bien sûr, pas de problème. So he sat down, and I bought myself a newspaper um, and a packet of biscuits with, to read with a copy of The Times. But what I couldn't believe is this gentleman leant forward, took my packet of biscuits, opened it up, and ate one in front of me before I opened it. So I read the newspaper, and I think, what is going on? So I, I had a bit of eye contact with him, and I thought, don't say anything. I then picked a biscuit out myself, and he, he stared at me. So this, this proceeded, and then, would you believe it, he went and took another of my biscuits. So I thought I'm going to say something, but no, I didn't. And then I took another one, to which, again, he gave me the big eye. Eventually, he just got up and walked off. And I was about to say, thanks a lot, hope you enjoyed the biscuits, but, you know, life's too short and I probably don't need the extra biscuits. So I finished my cup of coffee, shut my newspaper, and underneath my newspaper was my untouched, very same packet of biscuits. So you can imagine, he's telling the story without the end. Anyway, I made it here. I'm very happy to be here today. And I'm going to talk to you about Lexus. Um, first of all, what I would like to do is to talk to you about the brand itself and give you a little bit of background. Lexus in the world, it's a global brand. For those of you who don't know, it's the luxury brand within the Toyota Corporation. Lexus was launched back in 1989 in the USA. Our global sales currently 360,000 units and our biggest market is very much the American car market where we sell around 200,000 cars. Europe, China and Japan follow with between 40 and 60,000 sales per year. Just to give you a bit of background though onto the history of the brand, which I think is important to understand it, is to take you back to the initial launch that Toyota made in 1989. Toyota had been successful um, with its mainstream Toyota cars since the 1960s with the, the Toyota Corolla, which in actual fact was the biggest selling car in the world. And in the early 80s, Toyota management in Japan identified a luxury car opportunity in the US. And Chairman Eiji Toyoda, who is the actual the cousin of the founder of Toyota, um, Kichihiro Toyoda, decided to launch a luxury automotive brand. And he challenged his engineers with the question, can you create a luxury vehicle to challenge the world's best? And over the next six years, a total of 1,400 engineers, 2,300 technicians uh, developed the first Lexus with 450 prototypes and a phenomenal amount of testing. It was a huge, huge investment. Um, and the result was this. And I'm going to show you the TV commercial that launched the brand back in 1989. After years of intense work, Lexus is ready to celebrate because even at the equivalent of 145 miles per hour, the Lexus LS400 is designed to stir the soul and not much else. So there it was, the relentless pursuit of perfection, the founding principle upon which the brand was launched. Today, I'm focusing on our European business. Last year, in Europe, we sold 44,000 cars. And from a brand management perspective, specifically, our new digital presence operates with 35 countries, 27 languages, and 42 websites. And I'm going to come on and talk about this in detail. But that's the context of Europe. What's important to understand, though, is in Europe, we're still a niche player. 
I want to give you a little perspective of where we are. So with below 50,000 sales in Europe, Lexus is a small player compared to the big German three that dominate the premium car market, frankly. Brand awareness, units in operation, share of voice are all relatively low. So we've got to fully leverage what we do have, and that means also dealers, customers, very importantly, and all the people that like our brand and our products. Today, we do have an excellent product lineup, and we've made significant steps forward in design and technology. This is the CT200H, the world's first compact luxury hybrid car that we launched quite recently. Another car that's just being introduced um, in the summer, this, we just, we've just introduced it, is the GS Performance Hybrid Sedan. The RX, maybe some of you are familiar with this, the world's first luxury SUV vehicle, the world's first luxury SUV that introduced hybrid technology as well. Russia is a very important market for us as well. And we have exclusive products in Russia which we market. This is the ES sedan, a very comfortable, luxurious offering. And not surprisingly, the Russians do like big, impressive vehicles. And, and you don't get much bigger and more impressive than this, the LX SUV. Finally, we have performance attributes and exclusive sports cars too. This is the LFA, a super sports car that does 0 to 60, 2 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds. Predominantly, though, Lexus is known for its comfort, its refinement, and its luxury. And this derived from using the finest materials, the finest craftsmen, and finest processes. What specifically differences the brand, though, differentiates the brand, though, is a couple of things. First of all, we are, we believe, pioneers. Technology and innovation, very important for us. We pride ourselves on introducing leading edge um, technology in our vehicles. And Lexus Hybrid Drive is probably the best evidence of that, combining um, electric motors and engines with, with petrol engines as well. The other differentiator is our customer service. We pride ourselves on this and have been recognized by winning numerous awards both in the US and in the UK and the rest of Europe with JD Power as the best example. Year after year, our legendary customer service. It's all about the customer experience. And this is fundamental to our approach to communications as well. That customer experience should be reflected in it. But we're evolving as a brand today. And now I'm going to show you a way how. On the pillars that I've just talked about, our differentiating experience, our new design, our technology, and our new driving experience, we have great ambition to, to be seen as a unique premium brand, a true alternative to the big German three competitors. And here's a film that talks about our new brand strategy.
Lexus is creating amazing. This is built from our progressive luxury ambitions. We wish to be seen as a progressive luxury manufa manufacturer, and these are the pillars of that foundation. Creating amazing is our new brand expression, manifesting that. As part of this new brand expression, we've changed our visual identity. We're going to be much more bold and confident. We've got new style of photography, more dynamic. We've got much more colorful um, expression as well, and typography in our art direction as well. So much bolder than we've been previously. We've got new advertising campaigns, which are just launched as well, showing the first manifestation of this new brand expression. And here are a couple of print examples just showing that new style, if you like, that we're, we're introducing. So much bolder, much brighter, much more confident. Here's one that was taken in Manchester last week. Um, you can see from the weather probably, our wonderful June. As the last thing of our brand campaign, I'm going to quickly show you a new TV commercial that's just running as well, introducing this, the first advertising on TV show and creating amazing. So, this is it, the new brand expression, Creating Amazing. It's great because what it does in actual fact, it informs how we work. It's a big brand strategy that we're going to utilize and deploy across all our model communications moving forward. Lexus has amazing cars. Not everybody knows that, but we intend to tell them that and hopefully persuade them of that. But also, Lexus does amazing things as a brand. There are great stories that we have as a company to tell people, to convince them, and help them engage with us. So, that's a bit of the context of the background of the brand strategy and the brand expression. Now that I've explained that, I'd like to take you to our Creating Amazing approach online. How do we deliver this? We've just launched in the UK what we believe is a game-changing website. I'd like to take you through why the new website is so important to us and why, how we got to our new site, and then we're going to have a look around it. Now, I haven't got you lots of charts of numbers and facts to extol the virtues and importance of digital to you because I know you all know that. However, I'd like to show you just three slides that basically demonstrate the importance of digital in the automotive buying process. First of all, 94% of people use the internet to research a new vehicle. That's almost everyone, not particularly surprising, you might say. However, it's a lot more than from many other categories. 78% of those go straight to a manufacturer's website. And what effect is this high percentage having on our industry? 25% of people only visit one dealership. So visits to dealerships are on the decline. Basically, the web has replaced what used to be a trawl around dealers, what salespeople used to say to them and um, give them their pitch. In fact, only 27% of people now visit over four retailers, dealerships. And that figure stood at 47% five years ago. 
So basically, the web has changed the purchase process dramatically. And so the website needs to be very good indeed. And that's where so much of the persuading and the decision making is taking place. So enough of the numbers. Um, let's now go to the website. First of all, a bit of background on how we developed it. Let's have a look at the vision we set ourselves. A lot of words, and I'm going to read them out, but it's important. We, did, we spent hours discussing this. So the vision was to develop an industry-leading website that represents the new brand direction and delivers a superlative user experience. It must also be effective in seamlessly driving users through the purchase funnel, maximizing the efficacy of Lexus's digital presence as both a sales tool and retention platform. So how did we get there? Well, we worked very closely with our agency, Amaze, over quite a long and rigorous process. It was very thorough, as I said, and eventually, we've arrived at our solution. The task we set ourselves was obviously to make the site look good, but it must be usable, drive users through the purchase funnel, and importantly, we have to roll this out across Europe. We have many websites, um, 42 to be precise, to consider as well. So now I'm going to talk you through the process that was taken to deploy um, and each step along the way and give you a flavor of what um, was involved. So the first step, to define the goals and objectives. In a nutshell, describe success. What are we trying to achieve? And this should be done on various levels for brand, reach, key performance indicators, overall purpose, etc. So really paint a picture on what the goals and objectives are. And I'll come back to KPIs a little later on. Step two, research and analysis. We went through an exhaustive process here. Um, multiple sources across Europe, expert analysis, desk research, each facet of the digital experience, competitive analysis, and so forth. But very importantly, do your homework. Really understand the situation. Step three. Gather audience insight. Quite obvious, but it's changing. And really, with the way people are consuming digital today, it's important to fully understand that. So an analysis of digital behavior. We talked to users extensively, understood regional differences. Again, desk-based research deployed here as well. The next stage was performing a gap analysis. So what's missing from the current offer that we've got the current suite of automotive websites, our competitive ones, in terms of platforms that are being offered, channels, technology, content, functionality, fulfillment, and importantly, experience. The next step, step five, set a vision and a roadmap. This is, it's not something that can be turned around in a day, and we should be realistic, we thought, in achieving what we had to achieve. So a roadmap, very necessary for short-term, mid-term, long-term as well. And here again, as part of this, strategic principles. The final step, conceive, design, and build. And only now did we start to think about the solution, armed with all the learnings from the previous stages of research. I'm not going to take you through all the learnings. There were many that we had along the way from this process. There isn't time, and I can't give you all the intelligence that I paid for. However, here are some of the key findings. Firstly, for Lexus particularly, the web is a key battleground. The journey to purchase isn't as straightforward as it used to be. At its most simple, here's a representation of it. But because digital makes it easy, users can explore. They expand their original options out wider, consider more brands than previously, and they do this more than once. It's easy to go back, reassess, and this is where Lexus particularly is more likely 
to get into the consideration set than previously. When dealer visits are more prevalent. Remember I said 25% of people now only visit one dealership. So this is a huge opportunity for us. It's where we have to impress to convert and where we must get noticed. And of course, search plays a vital role in driving traffic to the site. It's very important reason as to why, as a challenger brand, we needed to deliver an amazing website. Secondly, homogeneity. Getting noticed means standing out. We have an opportunity here, as a number of car manufacturers adopt quite a similar approach, and maybe for good reason. So just to demonstrate this, let's make a grid and apportion a basic structure to it for what is a home page for a car website. If we fill this, we can put on the top a top-level navigation, a showcase scrolling with windows, with models, campaigns in it. Below that, normally three spotlights and calls to actions on the right and underneath global navigation. This is our old website. In actual fact, it's just been changed in the UK to what I'm about to show you, but it was where we came from. And in fact, this is also currently being deployed, will be changed in the rest of Europe shortly. If you look at Audi, it's very similar in terms of the structure. Similarly, Mercedes, very similar. And BMW 2, slightly different. So we believe there was room to stand out and be different. Importantly, cast your net wider. Learn from others. And Lexus very much wants to be and is seen as and is a premium brand. So why not learn from luxury brands? How do they behave on the web? What do they do? So by looking at other websites, you can see how a premium brand attracts users' attention by sophisticated, simple design. But premium websites are rich, sumptuous, but they're not just about beautiful images and expensive products. They also have a job to do and a brand story to tell. So we need to capture users' attention when we have the opportunity to get into their consideration set. The next finding, today's consumer wants more. And when they're paying attention, hopefully, when you get their attention and they are with you, you have to give them what they want. Our research identified that content and functionality that the users want is not being provided by all websites. So many brands make the mistake of telling their website users what the brand wants to hear rather than what they, the user, wants to know. Not all users are sophisticated. We need to make the experience simple and usable. And because of that, task completion is low. We judge the success or not of the site on what content is viewed, whether it encourages action, um, how long people spend with the content, how many book a test drive, order a brochure, use a dealer locator, etc. The website has to obviously work for our business too. So, I'd like to show you a short film now of the website. I've had it pre-recorded, just in case. Um, this, the, the, this video showcases the site, and afterwards, I'll come on to specific details within it, um, uh, highlights, if you like, that I wanted to point out to you. I do urge you, though, after today, to go and visit lexus.co.uk and experience this for yourself. It's, as I mentioned earlier on, this is the first website we've launched. We have a Russian website being launched in a couple of weeks, the same manifestation as well as what you're about to see. And we plan it thereafter to roll across the whole of Europe in 42 different versions across this year and into early next year in a phased approach. We'll now show you the video.
So let's have a look at some of the detail, some of the thinking behind the site and some of the benefits that it brings to us as a business. Again, my fear of live demos based on many experiences in the past, <laughs> um, and even a bit today, um, has meant that I have in the meet screen captured most of this and with somebody going through the website in a predetermined path to illustrate more efficiently what I want to show you. But first, I'm going to talk about mobile. In actual fact, this is yet to launch. Um, it's just about to launch quite soon, and what you're seeing is a sneak preview. Obviously, we all recognize the importance of mobile, but central to the approach when imagining our solution for mobile was a strategy which we call progressive enhancement. Rather than stripping away the content and functionality from the main website until what's left would fit in to the mobile device, which is usually often how it is done, we did it the other way around. We designed the basic content and functionality with the appropriate care and attention for the most basic interface and the mobile, which is the mobile, and then enhance that. Mobiles are used for browsing, sure, but they're even more important when used for performing an action. And actions are extremely important to both users and to us, as these are a large part of how we measure the site's success and actually deliver leads to our retail network. Ordering brochures, finding dealerships, booking test drives, these are all vital. It might seem obvious, but you have to serve it up in the seamless, simple fashion. And as such, it's vital that our mobile forms don't simply replicate the ones on the main site. They have to be customized and custom built. They must maximize the potential of the device and provide a similar experience that anticipates the need of the user. Now I'm going to switch out of PowerPoint and give you an insight into some of the details. Again, I've recorded this just to give you a break from listening to me. And this time there's a voiceover too. So this will highlight the key parts, the key highlights of the website. As you can see here, on the main side, we don't employ the mobile specific functionality of the other, locate me, navigate to, the call button, etc. But we do use the same design principle of easy progression and task focus, but display the content differently. So, to the home page. You'll notice that it's unusually uncluttered, a recognisable signifier of a premium brand website presentation. We haven't crammed every business unit's requirements into the space above the fold. By using the start of what you will see later is an unusually long page, we're able to display feature content and promotions in the large window at the top, the full range, and news and offers at the bottom of the page. Some countries will include social media here, reviews, concept cars, any content they want to, so users can start exploring without having to start a journey. As we're a comparatively small brand, familiarisation with our range is nowhere near as strong as that of our competitors, and so simply presenting them with a list of model names and hoping they'll plump for the right one isn't an option. Our navigation must work much harder than that. You'll notice that the navigation pushes the page down rather than covering content up or taking the user to a landing page. So they still know where they are in the site and we show the whole range neatly presented and also switch from a visual to a specification driven comparison. However, they prefer to see the content. Let's go into what we call a car chapter, the information about a specific model. On the topic of selecting how users want to see the content, this area here allows users to change the manner in which large sections of content are presented. This view introduces the car much in the same manner as a magazine would, beautifully laid out copy and image with a brief overview. As you can imagine, this also looks superb on an iPad. However, the user can elect to change this view and be introduced to the car through imagery. You'll see the same overview content here, but just images thereafter. Or, as an interactive view, each country can choose which view they choose as their default presentation, and can also interrogate site analytics to alter it according to which one users seem to prefer. This interactive view offers the users the chance to interact with the car, 
changing the colours and wheels and starting to configure it to their preferred specification. The colour this user has chosen is red. You'll see why this is important shortly. And there is a contextual call to action, a link to the full configurator, which is a very powerful conversion tool for us. You can visit the site yourselves to scrutinise the page in detail, but here are some of the main points. As we scroll up the page, you'll notice that the page navigation sticks to the top of the page, allowing the user to focus on the task in hand. And as each section follows another, the navigation labels progress from left to right. As we get to the full configurator, you'll see that the car is red. Crimson red, to be precise. That's because we set it as red at the top of the page. Nice little touches like this occur throughout the site, not necessarily explicitly noticeable, but all part of creating amazing. Immediately beneath the configurator, you'll see the calls to action. Users are more likely to do something after a configuration. Therefore, intelligent placement of these items is important. In this instance, we're highlighting find a dealer based on our research. However, if test drive becomes more popular after a configuration, we will change that. You'll also see the inclusion of a little brand snippet here, a nice piece of content designed to help tell the brand story and increase affinity, another of our KPIs. Now, you'll have noticed that this is a very long page. This is an approach that you may have seen creeping into web design of late, and it's something you'll see more and more of. It's not just a trend, though, certainly not from our point of view. Car sites are complicated. There's a lot of information to consume, and more than one way into that content. Through the research we conducted in the initial phases, we noticed a particular behaviour on more standard, multi-page websites, that of anchoring. Users tend to land on a page or navigate to it, and then drop anchor. They tend not to stray too far from where they initially landed and, subsequently, miss lots of content. And so we wanted to try and present all the information a user needs in one place, without the attendant clutter that usually accompanies this strategy. The long page lends itself to our philosophy of Kaizen, a Japanese practice of focusing on continuous improvement. Each content section is a module and is placed in a specific order. As we monitor each module, we're able to see which perform better, drive users to action, which users spend most time in, which encourage the most interaction, and which are the most popular and the like. This information is fed back into the business and we can adjust the order and emphasis accordingly. We can also add and remove sections should we feel it appropriate or as the site naturally evolves over time. So, by the time this site has rolled out across all 35 countries, we expect to see significant differences as we perform our analytics on a country-by-country -country basis so as not to impose a European view into local markets. This modular approach also helps us when it comes to search. As you scroll down the page, we have to make sure that the URL changes, avoiding a potential disaster for search. If the answer to a user's search query isn't at the top of the page, how are we going to answer it? Well, we've built the site so that each section is individually indexed by Google. So if a user types a search query in, the page will load and scroll to the pertinent section. Each individual country is, is responsible for its own search strategy and implementation, and we've built a solution that can accommodate that. OK. Just some highlights of the site. So, to summarise, creating amazing online. We believe we've got a differentiator, a true differentiator, in the premium car market. It's been designed to weave brand and product together, showcasing our new brand, expression creating amazing. Fundamentally important, it's developed out of user requirements and insights, which is at the heart of Lexus's values. And importantly, it's a European solution, flexible, adaptable, across territories and in response to analytics. Finally, it's aligned obviously to business imperatives that we've set. Briefly, I'd like to talk about measurement. 
the site is always in beta. For this approach to work, most importantly, you need the right KPIs and goals. These need to be agreed between the brand, custodian, the marketing team, the website agency, and the media agency. The KPIs and goals you have are consistent across markets. You can share learnings. The data you base your optimization on must be quality data, and therefore, by the way, you need quality analytics, software, and media data. And any optimization can only be as strong as the data allows it to be. So beta optimization approach to digital is fundamentally important. You have to have an agile search strategy that derives the, tra the traffic to the correct section of the site and keep on optimizing, keep on improving, keep on learning, keep on updating. Just a few results I'm going to highlight. The UK site's been live for just over three weeks, and we've got some very encouraging metrics. We've got a 75% decrease in bounce rate, so that's people leaving the site. We've got a 100% increase in visit duration, the time people are spending with us on the site. We've got 40 times increase in views of key content, such as prices and specification. So they've got, gone to that and they're staying, um, spending time with that. More people, 40 times. And finally, 70% increase in the use of a dealer locator. So, just a few thoughts to leave you with for your consideration. What we learned on Creating Amazing. Do your research. Test your findings with your customers and target audience. Give your users what they want to know, not what you want to tell them. And go further. Surprise them. Delight them. Don't stop. Our approach comes out of Alexa's guiding philosophy, Kai Zen. This philosophy is rooted in our commitment to future improvements and our ambition to help improve our customers' experiences and quality of life. Because at Lexus, we don't stop until we create amazing. Thanks very much for listening to me.